I bought this so-called spy or nanny cam on eBay with the intention of um, discreetly monitoring uh, a situation. It offers a lot for the £15. You get 1080p video recording with sound, a Wi-Fi interface, live video monitoring, motion detection, video recording on motion detection, remote download of uh, recorded files, remote administration, all in discrete packaging, and a five-hour battery life. Well, that's not too shabby for 15 quid. Let's take a look at the unit. The camera, HD camera connected at one end, quite a lengthy flexible cable. Um, the microphone is here, the antenna is connected here and is of this variety. There's a, a proprietary connector but they give you a, a cable which connects to USB and you can plug that into your computer to power the unit or to charge the battery when the battery is connected. An on off switch and this is a take a snapshot switch. Um, it's also a reset switch if you hold that down for 10 seconds the system will reset to factory defaults. So that's the, uh, the hardware of the thing. Um, it's usually covered in um, shrink wrap uh, black plastic so it looks more like this, like the battery. But it does get quite hot and so I take the cover off mine to help with cooling. And it comes with a sticker which is unique to the device and you are supposed to be able to use that sticker to um, set the thing up but that's where the problems arise um, which I'll mention more about shortly. So I'm going to run it from the bench power supply and it takes about 300 milliamps so it's about a watt and this thing gets hot very hot so it's a Wi-Fi camera designed to communicate through Wi-Fi um, to your local router and then out onto the internet which is how users gain access to it. The problem arises, how do you tell the, uh, the device what the Wi-Fi password is if you haven't got access to a user interface? Well, as is commonly the case, this device from the factory configuration presents um, a Wi-Fi hotspot on that IP address. And if you point a web browser at that IP address on that local hotspot Wi-Fi network, you'll see a web interface. This is that web interface. So that's showing a live camera view. Um, and this is the setting we uh, are interested in. Um, here's where you can do a whole bunch of things. But the thing you want to do in this case is uh, configure the Wi-Fi. So you pick the Wi-Fi channel you want and then connect to it. It will ask for the password. You provide it. And when you reboot the machine, um, it won't present this hotspot anymore. Instead, it will log on to your local Wi-Fi network and present a user interface there at an IP address that's determined by how your network's set up. You can also use your smartphone to uh, see what the camera's seeing. I use an application called iMiniCam, but there were problems adding new, um, new cameras. Uh, for example, there's a new camera there, so let me just click add it. No, user ID is invalid. Oh dear. Well, let me try something else. Let me go to manual add it. You can type all that stuff in. It still doesn't work. You can type search LAN, it finds it, and you're back in the same box you were before that you can't get out of. This is a nightmare. Scan that helpful code I showed you earlier. Waste of time. Read the manual. <laughs> no, just connect to the Wi-Fi network which the device has created. That's what mine's called. And then in my case, I open the app called iMiniCam. Then click the plus sign to add a new camera. Then click Set up camera Wi-Fi connection and connect. Select the Wi-Fi that you need. And then when you go back to the camera, uh, it's now asking for the Wi-Fi password for the network which it thinks is yours which is the strongest signal one you can change it if it's wrong and then wait and what it will do is save that password and network SSID so that it can log on next time and it will reboot the machine and connect via that interface 
So let's have a look around the user interface. Um, this is the main preview screen. You can see a clock ticking right away here, so the footage is timed. Um, you can change the brightness, contrast, and flip the image left and right using these symbols here if you want to. You can take a snapshot here. Uh, the business end of things is around here. Um, about um, you can set the time on an NTP server and have it update the time every 24 or 48 or 168 hours. You can choose where you set the time, which time server you need. Uh, when you're done, save save the entry, and that's done. Um, miscellaneous. You can um, select power frequency, whether you want the power LED to be on or not. Um, I don't think there is an infrared LED, so um, I've got it on automatic there. System log never seems to uh, have anything of interest in it. You can clear it. You can select the language, but it's selected automatically. System users, there are various different users you can have with different passwords. And they can be uh, of status guest, operator or admin. And those capabilities are defined here. So various um, statuses can do different things. Um, and you can have one, two, three, six users. Um, you can update the, the firmware. Network, um, this is where you can do your IP configuration. You don't have to use DHCP. You can hardwire the, the address you want it to have. Um, you can give your Wi-Fi passwords uh, here. AP mode setting, you can actually change the name of the access point and decide whether it's open or encrypted and there are two encryption schemes there. Um, point to point settings, you just change the password on the point to point um, interface there. Alarm settings, um, in here you can disable the alarm or enable the alarm. You can set the sensitivity of the alarm. These are motion detection settings. I've found three is about right. And then you can say what it should do. Uh, have an on-screen display, a warning tone, or a, and record video. Um, I've set all three. Uh, the top two don't do anything on a PC, but on a phone they, um, they send a notification. Um, and it records 60 seconds of video every time the alarm is triggered. If you want that motion detection to be set for certain times a day then you can do that in here. I have it set all the time. Um, and then recording you can set, actually I don't know what these do. I've never set them and um, it records just fine to the SD card. I guess it would give you um, uh, a subsection in the SD card. Browse doesn't do anything there. Um, and then the SD recordings themselves Record settings, this is how full the SD card is, you can format it here. Um, recording when there's an alarm, no recording ever, or recording to the schedule, so you can record unconditionally at the schedule, or only when there's an alarm, or you can not record at all. You can set the video recording quality, um, time of recording each file, 1 to 60 minutes, and loop recording and sound recording looping is um, when you run out of space uh, start deleting stuff from the oldest. Um, and then there's a multi-camera setup here which I haven't really used. So a wealth of features as they say. Well here's some footage shot from my office window. Um, it's a windy day so the trees are constantly moving um, which gives us an opportunity to understand the frame rate. Actually the cars do that as well. They say 25 to 30 frames a second, it's nothing of the kind, um, but it's entirely adequate to do what I want to do. Um, and the quality is reasonable. So that's it, £15 and all those features. I'm a happy chappy, I've got three of these. Um, anyway, I hope you found that interesting, maybe useful. Um, I'm always Happy to hear your comments, feedback, um, and answer your questions. I um, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.